Get Gutsy, episode number 170 with Christine Gallagher on the art of not settling. Welcome to Get Gutsy. I'm your host, Jenny Fennig, and I am so excited to be on this journey with you. A cutting edge show blending business and spirituality, Get Gutsy serves up a potent blend of stories, lessons, and tips to help you make a massive impact in the world through your soul's work and your inspired life. No more going it alone, no more excuses. The world needs more brave women saying yes to leadership. Are you with me? Good. Let's get gutsy now. Hey there, Jenny here. Yay, it's time for Get Gutsy. Okay, if you've been tuning in for a while, you're probably super excited that we have so many episodes for you. And if you're new, you're like, whoa, Jenny puts out a lot of episodes each week. And it's just because we are in the midst of Gutsy Coach Week. Before I go into that, I want to tell you just how excited I am to be in this month of December. It is a glorious time. I've been just really in my flow and appreciating the beauty of this time, appreciating the rituals, appreciating the traditions, appreciating so much. I, I'm really basking in this whole energy of appreciation. And I'm making a regular practice of that each morning, which is really, really cool. I'll, I'll talk to you about that more another time, but I'll say that I recently was turned on to a morning practice that I've known about, you know, for some time, but often we know about things that are going to be helpful and we don't do them. Huh? Because we get involved in all this other stuff that really isn't that important. And I've just come back to the importance of doing the small things because it makes me feel good. And that just helps everything, everything, everything. So, oh yes. And this is really what I bring to the table as a coach, just what I do with my people, all of it. It's how I want to parent, how I want to lead, how I want to live. Yeah. So we're, you know, coming into this final stretch of 2017 and looking out to what's ahead. So be mindful about what's working for you and what's not and how you're ready to make some shifts. I want to celebrate, uh, we have so many awesome new students in Get Gutsy Coach Training School. I am pumped. (laughs) We are coming up on the tail end of enrollment. We're closing our doors on December 19th and we just have such awesome women in. And I know it's, you know, it's a funny time sometimes to kind of enroll for something at the end of the year because a lot of people say like oh don't don't launch anything don't put anything out there because you're competing with Christmas and Hanukkah and the end of the year and all those kinds of things but I find this is a very powerful time for those who choose to work with me because you know that you want something fresh as we move into this new year and so big shout out to all of my students uh, coming into our January of 2018 class I am so pumped to work with you big shout out to all my grads because we have such a beautiful supportive community and I pride myself on that and big shout out to all of my mastermind clients my masterminds called glow we're about uh, we're in month two of our six-month journey my mastermind and these women are just blowing me away with their love for each other and their support for each other and their willingness to do the work and y'all everything that you see that I've done in my business is because I have a coaching business I said yes to coaching 10 years ago that's why I'm able to now you know, work from home, live in this amazing community in Western Massachusetts. I homeschool my sons. My daughter's in a great preschool a few days a week. If you would have told me my life would look like this, you know, 10 years ago, I would have been like, really? Like, how would that ever be? I don't even know what you're talking about. And it's simply by my willingness to just, just keep going take that next right step, take that next right step, make investments of time, money, and energy, and you know, always be around those who have my back and are supporting me on this wild quest. So that's just my intention for you, my hope for you is that you understand that and that you get what you need to take that next right step. 
And definitely something that you're going to need to take that next right step is being surrounded by a crew of supporters and those who totally believe in you and what you bring to the table. And that is absolutely my friend Christine Gallagher. Um, I am having this episode air during Gutsy Coach Week because Christine is a gutsy coach. Uh, Her and I met way, way back. She's one of the first women I met in my earlier coaching days. We met at Allie Brown's Shine event. We think it was in the year like 2010, I think Christine and I talk about on the episode, somewhere around that time. And our friendship blossomed because we attended live events and retreats and workshops held by mentors that we had at that time. And uh, a few years back, her and I even went to a really cool conference at Omega Institute in New York called Women and Power. That's where we saw Brene Brown. We saw some other amazing speakers. Um, uh, What was her name? Joan. Oh, Roshi Joan Halifax. Really cool. Like, um, I think I want to say she's Buddhist. Like, she's just this wise spiritual teacher. We were just around so many cool women. Her and I, you know, shared a hotel room together, shared a bed. That's when you know you're really close friends, when you can, you know, share a bed and be like, all right, see you in the morning. And that They only had a king size bed at this, this one particular place that we found. We're like, you know what, let's go for it. We like each other. It's cool. And, you know, over those years, we've known each other. We would share stories and ideas and also the truth of what we were going through personally as we were going our, growing our coaching businesses and you know I love Christine because she's very transparent and open I think she's become more so and you'll hear about that on the episode today especially over the last few years because she's gone through some really hard things and we get real with you on the episode and that's what I love doing as as the host is to really create a space where my guests feel very comfortable to be able to tell the truth and I always say to them imagine we're at you know our favorite cafe and we're just chatting over a meal and you know, just being real with each other. And what was cool is even though I've known Christine for years, I learned a lot about her courageous journey on this episode. And there were some things that I had, I'm like, whoa, I had no idea that you did that. And you'll hear about that on the episode today. Some of the gems that I really, really love, we talk about do great coaches need to have it all together? Mm-hmm. How to deal with an oversaturated market. Because it is, y'all, right now. It's very, very saturated. And it's okay. You know, you can rise above. We talk about, and Christine drops this gem. She says, the next wave is on its way. And that's really, really cool. And then one of, like, the most powerful messages that I I know to be true, and I, I love it when I hear other women say it, is leaders go first. Leaders go first. And it's just like, that's what it is, y'all. That's what it is. That's what it is. And again, this episode is part of our epic gutsy coach week we're featuring several coaches here on the show i want you to get inspired by what is possible when you say yes to this glorious and abundant path of coaching and i know you are going to love this episode with my dear friend christine gallagher and the major overarching theme that i just when she said it i was like oh yeah that's the name of your episode girl it's this the art of not settling the art of not settling and listen if you know you want to be a part of my next crew of coaches and get gutsy coach training school you want to really go deep into what it is to be a spiritual coach making a difference and a great living make sure you head over to coachtrainingschool.com before we close our doors coachtrainingschool.com because if you're realizing that the path you're on you are settling and you want something more and you're ready now, then now is the time. So enjoy this episode with Christine Gallagher on the art of not settling. Christine Gallagher, welcome to Get Gutsy. Hi, thanks for having me. (laughs) And I was saying as we were getting started, I'm like, I can't believe I haven't had you on until now. And yet you're here because now the show has been on for more than two years. Kind of can't believe that either. I'm like, crap you know time goes time goes and we met do you remember what year it was that we met because I don't but I know it's been a while we were talking about this recently I think it was 2010 because you had said you were pregnant with your second god that's when I first met you yeah okay cool and we meet through like Allie Brown's world first yeah Uh we were in uh we were at the event together yes okay shine and then we became buds when we were in Fabian Fredrickson's mastermind okay oh my god so we're like 
some of the originals. Um, before mm-hmm. this talk, I was talking to Amy, Amy Ehlers, who I don't know if you know of her, but she's like really been around. She got she got found coaching like 1999 and wow. became coach in 2000. Like, oh my god, it makes me. I, I told him like, I feel like you're like a senior. I think I'm like a junior compared to you, you know, because there's. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. coaching is an interesting world, and you know we are publishing your episode during Gutsy Coach Week, so we're just shining light on coaching, and it's just cool to talk about like how we found our way here, and then the people that you meet along the way, and so we're going to get into all of that, because I know you have a lot of, of great stories and wisdom to share, but where I want to start first, let's go back to when Christine was you know, much younger, and what I say to my guests, like, 18 and younger, okay, into that whole world. When you're like a kid, teenager, I don't care, somewhere in that space. And I want to talk about that because I find there's like an interesting thread because what my fascination is in your sacred work. It's like the sacred work that we're here to do. And I want to know, as you think back to that time, like was there a particular memory, particular experience, just like something that you recall from that time that was like really amazing, like just super mm-hmm. special yeah. So I'm thinking about this time, pre- time period and um, you first said 18 and younger. So I'm thinking high school, right? And mm-hmm. high school was like, I was so angsty in high school and it may have been because I had like this greater thing I was here to do, but didn't like know how to get to it. And maybe I was frustrated. I don't know. Um, but I will tell you that ever since I was probably um, in nursery school, and this is going back to when I was like four years old. Um, mm-hmm. It was always it was always um, said to me that I inspire people even when I wasn't trying. Mm. So that's kind of a thread that's been there mm-hmm. throughout my life. And um, and then I had my hands read a couple of years ago, which was really fun. And she basically just reiterated everything that I had been feeling. And she's like, "Yeah, the reason why, you know, you were doing that when you were little is because that's like part of your path." So that was like, "Holy moly!" You know, um, it was confirmation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Confirmation. That's so cool. So you just remember feeling angsty, kind of like you're ready to get going, but what exactly it yeah. was, you looked like you weren't sure, but you, people were telling you that you were inspiring to them, like from as far back as you can remember. Yeah, they were. And it was hard, like, you know, in high school time, cause I was like, I don't feel like I'm inspiring anybody. Like I'm a mess, you know? <laughs> uh-huh. No, but like I was trying to find my path, like we all do, you know? And, yes. um, and I, I think that, you know, in that, in that time, it was kind of buried under stuff, yes. like layers of stuff. And it, it almost felt like I didn't, I didn't fit in. I've kind of always felt that. So I feel like yes. it's maybe somehow, connected, you know, yes. that like not fully understood. Yes, yeah. totally, totally, totally. And I love what you said about like, I'm a mess. And I've been playing with that recently because <laughs> I had no, seriously. And I, I was I was delivering a webinar recently because, you know, we're, we're in this enrollment period for my coaching school. And one of my, one of my kind of messages is your wound is your message. And then I put in parentheses next to wound, like your mess. And I've heard people say that before, like your mess is your message. And when I had somebody recently, it was like, Oh, you know, I, I'd love to be a coach, but my life is like, I'm such a mess right now. Like I couldn't do that. And I, I said back to like the person who was, you know, like friends with this person who was like starting the conversation. I'm like, hot messes make the best coaches, you know? And so they mm. this kind of theory that that's not true that if your life isn't, you know, perfect, you don't have anything to add to the conversation. You couldn't be a coach. Like you couldn't be a, a this or a that because if you'd only could be a coach or a therapist or a fill in the blank, if you've got all your shit together and That's just not true. Like we don't all have our shit together all the time. No, no. And, and and Jenny, I know like you and I have talked about this like privately too. Like, you know, there are, there are ups and downs at every level and every stage of business. And I have clients who've said that's me too before. Like if they're newer in business, they'll be like, how am I going to, you know, advise people if, you know, I'm just starting and, you know, especially the coaches and um, I'm like, you know, you have to look back at your whole, and I know you talk about this too, like your whole life experience Mm -hmm. is part of your training is part of your, you know, platform. Um, And you can get credentials and you can get this and that, Mm -hmm. but you know, if you've always kind of been that go-to person that people talk to and get advice Mm -hmm. from, or, you know, there's something to pay attention there. And just because you don't have 
quote, real world, you know, you're just getting started. You still have that like heart of a coach, I believe. Oh, absolutely. And I believe too that, you know, when we're vulnerable and we're transparent, when we're honest saying like, I am going through some stuff right now, or, you know, this is a challenging time for me, but you know what? I'm continuing to show up and I'm continuing to do the work and I'm continuing to, you know, get help or get support where I need in these particular areas that are particularly challenging for me right now. It gives our people permission to be human and to say like, oh my God, you know, like I'll have, I'll share certain things with people and they're like, what? Like I just, I thought you were quote perfect. I thought you, you're like, no, never at any time. And so we can just be honest. Like this is yeah. what it is. And for those of us who are called for service, particularly in the coaching realm, listen to that call. Don't listen to that critic. That's like, well, you're a fucking hot mess. And so you can't, you got to wait you know, 25 yeah. years until you have all this stuff yeah. sorted before you can even contemplate that. Cause that's just, that's just crap. And so let's it talk is. about, you know, the challenging part of your childhood. Maybe it was, um, you know, the, the angsty stuff, or maybe it was something else. Was there something that, you know, particularly happened that you just recall that was like hard, but has prepared you for all that, that you're doing now? Yeah. Well, I'll say the one thing that, um, you know, and credit to you, Jenny, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, you had talked about your uh, journey with EMDR and I recently, mm -hmm. um, this year started my journey with that. It's a form of therapy. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm a big proponent of therapy, been in therapy on and off since 14. You know, I think it's great to have somebody to talk to like that. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that we dove into recently, again, credit to you for letting me know about this actual modality that I didn't even really know about. Yeah. Um, worked a lot on something that had happened when I was, um, when I was a kid and it was that, you know, my, and I know you had, you know, your sister passed away when you were in a high school. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was in elementary school, my best friend passed away and it was nice. a really, uh, awful circumstance. Like, um, it was like terrorism pre nine 11. It was like their plane yes. got bombed and our whole family died. Oh, um, I remember so as, that on social media and I yeah. didn't know that. And I was like, Oh my yeah. God, Christine, like that's big. Yeah. And I never, I always minimized it when I was talking to other people because of a couple of things. I think number one, it was, I was so fragile at the time. I was 11 years old, um, mm -hmm. that I probably just buried it underneath and like, didn't, you know, I just couldn't deal. Yeah. But also like when people, when it would come up, I'd be, I noticed I was like minimizing it, you know? And mm. I was like, eh, it's not that big a deal. It was a long time ago. And it's like, no, that, that is the big deal. And that has shaped what I do. And so I bring it up just because mm -hmm. I recently decided to be more open about the fact that I had gone through this and to not let that voice of like, it's not that big a deal. It was so long ago, mm -hmm. like keep me from sharing the lessons from it. And I do believe one of the big lessons is that she showed me that I need to like live the hell out of my life yes. while I'm here. Um, because some people don't get to do that. They don't get the opportunity. And I'm like getting choked up thinking right. about it, but I, I actually put it into my nurture sequence for my email list mm -hmm. that that's one of the things that every new person who joins my list gets is a little bit of that story, which is a big mm -hmm. deal. And I didn't really talk about it a lot. Wow. And the power of going through that therapy and EMDR, especially because what I love about that form of therapy, and I use that too, to, you know, really heal the, the death of my sister. I carried a lot of shame around that. Uh, I did, you know, when you're young, you don't know how to handle things. A lot of adults don't know how to handle death. I mean, yeah. it's, it's like, it's going to happen to all of us and to us and through us. And yet we still are, most of the society sucks at, at handling yeah. death, which is, which is tragic right there. But I went through, you know, intense slash beautiful EMDR therapy, just really coming to terms with my sister's death and the circumstances around that and how I knew how to handle it back then or didn't know how to handle it. And it is so, you know, liberating to do so. And you do go to another level in your work and your ability to communicate around this. And I'm so happy yeah. that, that you've done that. And like, you're using it as a message, but she wants you to. And like, my sister has a message yeah. too that she wants me to deliver. Like, they can't deliver that message yeah. in their body yeah. anymore. So it's like, yeah. it's our job. <laughs> yes. 
that's exactly it. That's exactly what I started to feel was like, what would Laura say? You know, mm. she would say, you know, quit worrying about this, that, and the other thing, go do, go do what you're here to do. Mm. And so that really drives me because part of me had like a guilt complex. Like I'm supposed to just constantly be in mourning. Like mm. I didn't know how to handle it. And mm-hmm. so that's why it kind of got pushed under, yeah. but like I can, I can hear a voice and it's like, just go do what you're here to do. Like, don't waste time. You, you know, don't yeah. waste time. Don't waste time. And that's such a great message for our listeners because you don't know how long you're going to get. It's the ultimate mystery. We're not guaranteed 100 years in this lifetime in this body. I know that my sister very much shares Laura's point of view, which is, yeah, just go and live. Go and live. Don't, you know, don't look back. You can learn from the past, but just, just go and make these moves. Take care of yourself, you know, live well. And then it's often, it is the, you know, the, the pain that, when we move through it and we have some clarity around it, we can share that. We can do it with a lot of integrity and with wisdom that can benefit our audience. Wow. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. And I'm, I'm so happy that EMDR helped you. helped you through that. That's very powerful. So, all right. So you had, you know, some, some stuff that you dealt with as a, you know, a younger girl and as a teenager, and then you found your way into a professional Christine what did you, like, where did you navigate? I know you went to college. So it's like, where did you navigate from there? What did you feel like you were supposed to land? <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting. I think so many people can relate to this because we're, we're told to pick our lifetime profession at 18 and it's like, yeah. not 20, whatever it is. Yeah. And it's just like, really? How do we know that? Um, so I was all mixed up. I mean, and this is like, so <laughs> this is like, so me, like I usually go the opposite of everyone else or I rebel yeah. or, you know, that's me. And uh-huh. um, nothing felt right. You know, I went away to college freshman year and I I thought I wanted to get away from Jersey. I thought I wanted to get away from Philly and I went away to DC for my freshman year and I did not like it. I I just didn't feel like it was the place for me. So I ended up leaving and transferring back to Philly. And like, I, at the time I felt all the shame around it. Like I was at this really good school in DC and what am I doing? And you know, I'm disappointing my parents and all that and whatever. Like now I look back and I was like, no big deal. You transferred schools. But you know, at the time it feels like, but then, you know, I graduated college. I thought I was going to be a a news producer. I wanted to produce the news in New York city. Like that's what I wanted to do. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that was, that was pretty much like where I was headed. And my senior year of um, college, I got an internship in the newsroom of uh the local news station like fox philadelphia and it was you know it was it was the newsroom it was the real deal it was pretty exciting but i also found out that it was like so cutthroat and like ladder climbing and probably because it was a top 10 market but i was just like yeah this isn't for me (laughs) so then i was like now what you know and and then i'm you know my mom had always said you'd be a good lawyer so go to law school so i was like okay i'll go to law school I go to law school and I'm there for one semester and I'm like, oh God, no. Like, this is not. <laughs> I didn't know you went to law school. That's so awesome. Well, Jenny was so typical because like there was like this big assignment we had to do in one class. I forget what class it was, legal procedure or some, something. And like the whole class had done this assignment one way and I was the one person in the class who did it a totally different way. And I was like, this is just so perfect. Like yeah. I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> I'm in the wrong um, room. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gotta go. So anyway, so I left there and then and found my way into grad school and, you know, went like the techie route, like information systems, information science, and um, came out of grad school, was working for a college. And I thought I had it made because I had an office and I had, you know, windows in the office. And it was was this great job, but I was miserable because the place was toxic. The place was totally Uh toxic. Uh And I just thinking, what the hell's wrong with me that like, I'm not happy anywhere. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, it was just that I was meant to be an entrepreneur. I just didn't know that at the time. And, right. you know, long story short, I, I hopped to another job and ended up getting laid off from that job. And while I was at that job, though, like social media was blowing up. That was when it was first starting. And I, I got online and I started to talk to all these women entrepreneurs on Twitter. And it was like the playing field was leveled and I could like talk to them and find out how they started their business. And it was very inspirational. And so when I, when I decided to start, you know, to not go back and get a job, part of the reason I did that is because those women gave me so much inspiration uh-huh. to go do it, you know, cause I was like, uh, I guess I, I'm laid off now. Like, do I go get a job or do I just do this thing? And I was like, I'm going to do this thing. And it was so scary, but at the same time, it was just very liberating. Cause I knew I didn't want to work for other people. 
Right. Which I know a lot of us relate to. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay. And so like, what were some of those first moves that you made when you were building your own business? You know, you didn't yeah, so get the job. Were you like, okay, I got to like, create all the money from the business. Did you have any other revenue coming in? How did you do this? No, I had unemployment. Oh, right. <laughs> um, okay. So you are right. Okay. Uh, and so that was a little bit of a help. I was married at the time, so that was a little mm -hmm. bit of a help. But what what really made a big difference, Jenny, is like mm -hmm. I've always been a big believer in coaching. And like even before I knew what that was called, mm -hmm. I felt like I was you know following people to get coaching from them, like mentors. And mm -hmm. um, when I found out about this whole online marketing world, that a lot of these women were coaches and consultants selling their knowledge. Right. Um, it was like it was like a light bulb. So anyway, to answer your question, what I ended up doing was right before I got laid off. I, I found a coach online who I just thought, Hey, I want her life. Like she works from home and you know, she goes to Starbucks whenever. And I remember she had red hair too. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I was like, all right, I'm going to hire her. She put out this call for her year long program. And so I'm still in a job, Jenny. This is like early 2009. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I don't even know what I'm signing up for, but I'm throwing $12,000 at this woman. Yes. I'm putting it all on my card. Yep let's see where it takes me because I know that I don't want to reinvent the wheel. So I'm willing to pay mm -hmm. to figure it out. And so it was very auspicious because two weeks after I hired that coach, I got laid off from the job. And so mm -hmm. it was freaky because you know I just put all this money out and I remember going home and emailing my coach and I was like very somber and I was like, hi, Alicia, I got laid off from my job. And like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to say. That's all. I, I just wanted you to know, you know, I just right. hired you. Yeah. And I remember she wrote back and she was like, congratulations. And she was like, so excited. Uh -huh. And I'm like, okay. She's like, don't you understand? She's like, this is the universe telling you that, yes, this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So that was really crazy. But, um, you know, it just, how I started getting things moving was I continued with the coaching. You know, I was mm -hmm. always, I'm always with a coach, a mastermind. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just learned as I went, it was really rocky. I barely made any money my first year. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I, I figured it out and figured it out, but coaching was a huge part of how I made my way in this yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I appreciate you sharing that story. And it's important because I know a lot of our listeners are at earlier stages and, or they're thinking about it. They're like in the job being like, I got to get out of here. Or they're, yeah. you know, maybe a stay at home mom and like, I just need, I'm ready for something new. I'm ready, you know, and yeah. some people think they can just get by like consuming free resources on the internet. And yeah. it just, it's, it's not going to be enough, especially now. I mean, it's not, 2009 anymore we're recording this at the end of 2017 like the the market has changed quite a bit especially in the coaching world I I've been yeah. I've been here um, as long as you have and wow things are different and yet we still need community we still need coaches we still need you know programs to be a part of because it just it brings you up because there's so much stuff that you go through on this freaking path as an entrepreneur, like all your stuff is going to come up. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, if we yeah. don't have like a community, a coach, a guide, it's so easy to quit. I mean, in the last year for you, like just kind of talk about, you know, the evolution you've been on and, and what you've seen in the coaching space, how things have evolved and, you know, just how you're feeling right now. Yeah, it's been a crazy few years. And I know, um, Jenny, you and I were talking about how like the landscape has majorly changed. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot more noise than ever. There's a lot more, you know, people out there doing what we do. I mean, coaches, mm -hmm. consultants, whatever. Yeah. Um, online marketers. Um, and it's been, it's been a crazy few years because um, like I've also made changes in my business. And so, mm -hmm. you know, one of my mentors said to me, um, you know, recently she said, Christine, you know, you've made decisions in the past few years, you've made like multiple decisions that would have crippled most people, but like you made the decisions. And mm -hmm. I was trying to explain to her why I was able to do that. It's because the pain of staying where I was, right. It's like that whole thing. It was worse than the unknown. So, right. um, so I, I changed my complete business model this year, you know, in my business. And that was a big deal because I was doing live events and live events were my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. And I just decided I, I want to break. I want to try something else. These take mm -hmm. up so much bandwidth and I want to see what else I can create. Mm -hmm. um, so that was like a very come to Jesus moment. Cause I'm like, where's the money going to come from? Like I have to reinvent, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but you know, here we are at the end of 2017, you know, 
there were no events this year and I did just fine. But like, again, it started with the decision uh, mm -hmm. that I was going to do it a different way. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's really such a key for entrepreneurs being able and willing to pivot mm -hmm. and change. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people are getting freaked out right now, Jenny, because there's so much oversaturation. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't look at it like with fear. I look at it with like, um, in, in a lot of ways, excitement, because mm -hmm. I feel like the next wave of whatever is on its way and uh -huh. the evolution of this world is, is on its way. And if we are grounded in our, um, in the, in the work that we know we're supposed to do, uh, you know, nothing can shake us, you know, it, things will go up and down. That's just business. That's life. But if you're doing what you're meant to do, what you feel love for doing, mm -hmm. then you know, the winds that are blowing, you know, it, it doesn't matter. There's always going to be something, you know, yes. oversaturated and, you know, lots of people crowding the market. I mean, there's always going to be something. Yes. Um, oh my gosh. You have, to, you have to hold on to your like magic about why you're actually doing this. Yes. Oh my gosh. That was just so wise. And I'm with you there. I just like, wow. I, yeah. I say in the last, like, few years especially, and this year was a freaking doozy. And I think, you know, the yes. political climate, um, just, yes. you know, what's been happening, hashtag me too. And today we're recording this when Time Magazine comes out with their person of the year. And I'm just like, ah! Yeah. And like you said, the next wave is on its way. And you know what? It's going to be fucking good. It's going to yeah. be so good. And we had to go through this like, yes. arr, 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 like very yes. windy hurricanes. I mean, come on. We had like some of the craziest Literally. hurricanes. <laughs> yeah. And so now it's like, all right, all right, like, let's just see where we are. And those who are meant to like really be here in the space will still be standing. No matter what happens, we'll still be standing. Exactly. And, you know, I know that about you. I know that about me that, yeah, we've, we've gone through shifts. I used to do, you know, my, I had like an annual event that I did that for several years. And then I got to a point just like, you know, I'm like, I'm good. You know, like I, I learned yeah. everything I was meant to learn. And I'm going to, you know, cause often we do that to like open up enrollment for our big program. And my curiosity was like, I think there's other ways to enroll for that, you know, besides yeah. a live event that does take up so much and, you know, the market shifts and the way you can get people there. I mean, it just, we have to be yeah. willing to do that or else we'll always just be wondering what if. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's, you could even look at it and, and the first time that you did a live event or the mm -hmm. first time I did a live event, mm -hmm. like it was like, how am I going to get through this? Like it, it was almost like a rite of passage yes. and yes. You, know, you get through it, you do it. But I love what you said about how, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the real ones will still be standing, you know, yes. like, and Jenny, this is how I feel like I'm in it for the long haul. I know you're in yes. it for the long haul. Like nothing's going to, you know, nothing's going to sway me to the point where I'm going to go back and get a job. Cause that's just not where I'm going. <laughs> like, right. you know, it's just, I'll figure it out. You I'll will figure, figure it, out. it out. You will figure it out. And those of us, like, again, entrepreneurs, you have to be super nimble and the coaches, like, I know we have a lot of coaches tuning in and this is gutsy coach week. And you know, I say to coaches, I'm like, this is not for the faint of heart. You've got to be strong. If you're going to make it in this arena, not just as an entrepreneur, but you're going to go through so much personally on this path that if you get so frazzled by shifts and change is going to be really, really tough for you. And so, you know, I, I have this podcast so we can have these real conversations and talk about some of the things that are going to come up and, you know, really how to hunker down in the sacred work that you're here to do. So where, like, what do you, what is your kind of big message right now, Christine, with, you know, where you feel like your zone of genius is and what you most help your people with? Yeah. And I, and I love the analogies that are flying around. I don't even think we mean it, but like hunker down, like in the yes. storm, we're hungry. Yes. Down. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So I think that, you know, for me, I'm still figuring out what it looks like. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of feeling my way through because mm -hmm. I was always kind of one of those people that's like, I don't, I don't know like what I'm meant for my purpose. Even though this inspiration thing was always kind of hanging out there, mm -hmm. I kind of denied it. Um, but in recent years, I finally am embracing it. Like this, this, mm -hmm. this could be it. This is really what maybe I'm meant to do and be and inspiring people and, um, you know, I used to do it from the stage and now, you know, it's happening online and offline yeah. as well. So, yes, you know, like the genius thing, again, still figuring it out, but I think that it goes to, um, the fact that I just seem to be a catalyst for, for, for people to make changes, positive mm -hmm. changes in their life. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll give you an example that comes from a long time ago, mm -hmm. um, 
which just shows kind of like how this has always been a theme. There was a, a girl who um, I went to college with and we ended up at the same job after college. We were both working for an advertising agency. I was miserable, of course. <laughs> um, and me and her used to go to lunch together and, and like powwow. And it, it turned out that she was kind of miserable too. And she was like, I really want to go back to school to be a teacher. And I'm like, well, why are you not going back to school to be a teacher? She's like, I don't know. I don't, like all this fear stuff. Uh-huh. And I remember like going with her to like an open house at a college, you know, to talk about the program and just like supporting her and encouraging her. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's like 20 years later, practically, she still talks about it. She's like, Christine, you were the reason that I actually... Yes. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I, you I love that. <laughs> yeah, you were coaching. You have this knack. And, yeah. and the neat thing that I love about, you know, this field of coaching too, is it's so flexible. Like you can yeah. coach for a while in this particular arena. And then like, you know what? I, my message is shifting. Like my passion is shifting, but you're still an amazing coach. And you still, you know, like that's what I always want people to understand. Is like, you can coach really on most anything. It's just a yeah. matter of, you being really strong as a coach and being able to invite people in, have these conversations, have, you know, and be willing also to have your clients like not like you sometimes. I think that's yeah. an important point. Is like, yeah. you know, I have to say certain, t- you know, certain things to clients, and I'm like, they might not like hearing this, or they might not like that I'm going to hold firm to the agreement, or that I'm going to, you know, whatever. But that's my fucking job, and yeah. you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're paying us to do. That's what you're you're paying me. You don't realize that you're paying me to do it, but you really are. And so I'm going to hold up my end. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. And, and so I, you know, I want people to realize too, you know, when you're being called to this path, you have to be really strong and take a stand for your clients, even when they want to like fall into a heap and go hide, you know, under the couch, you know, we're the ones who are willing to do that. And, yeah. you know, it's just such a cool thing. And, you know, I'm so grateful that you and I got to meet way back when. And, you know, we've had really powerful times together. We went to Omega and, you know, it was like the Women in Power conference. And we shacked up and shared a bed at the hotel. And then you <laughs> came to my most recent retreat because you yeah. were a great supporter of our coaching school. And you came and, you know, you met a lot of our students and our graduates and shared your wisdom and, you know, all that. And I'm just so excited for you and this journey that you're on and what's going to come next. And I'm, I'm grateful for your, you know, your vulnerability and your transparency around like, you know what, I'm navigating it because you really rocked it in the social media space online. Like you, you do that, you know, like you do yeah. that. You can do that all day, every day with your eyes closed. And when you get to these points, and I know you were recently at Allie Brown's um, workshop, iconic, right? Yeah. And, you know, she was like the person who you and I met because of, and she's yep. gone through like the ultimate transformation and evolution. And I think we, you know, we really just have to honor that and talk about it. You don't have to keep talking about the same shit like forever. If you just feel like I want to talk about some new stuff now yeah. <laughs> or I want yeah, a different totally. business model. Totally. Yeah. I want a different business model. I want a different niche. I want, you know, like you can, you can change it up. And I know Allie is somebody that, you know, a lot of people in our industry um, look up to because she was like kind of one of the original, you know, <laughs> like OG. she was one of the original um, big names. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, she was saying, you know, she, she met a guy, she got pregnant with twins and, you know, her, per, her perspective on everything changed. And um, she even said, it, you know, it wasn't easy to walk away from it, but it was a lot, you know, it would be much more painful to like stay. She's right. like, I need to change my, my life. She's like, our company mm-hmm. was on track for $10 million. And I just kind of said, I'm not doing it this way anymore. And so I think that that's really inspirational. Thank God she talks about it because, you know, it's funny. People want us to talk about this stuff. And I think they're really, um, they're really, uh, they, they admire, you know, the fact that we can talk about how things are not always so great. In fact, like the other day, Jenny, I was messaging you. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting bored with this and I'm not Mm -hmm. sure what's next. And I'm kind of like, I don't know. It's like, I'm in this weird, I said, I call it the soup, you know, I'm in the soup. Um, I don't know what next year looks like and that's okay. It's yes. okay. But I talk about it because I don't want people to think they're alone in that. You know, if you right. don't know what's going on, so, you know, some of us don't know either. <laughs> right. We're figuring it out with totally. you. Totally. And what I always say to my clients and, you know, my friends is just take that next right step. You know, the next right step, me like, I'm going to eat a really, you know, healthy lunch right now, or I'm going to have a green juice even when I kind of just feel like, you know, getting wasted and drinking a whole bottle of wine. It's like, you know, what's the next right step for you and to trust that. And, 
you know, when you feel like maybe you're going down a road that's not, it's just not sustainable. It doesn't feel good. I shared with you, I've been doing this new morning practice that Gabby Bernstein shared with me. I was at her book launch workshop and, you know, I thanked her because I had an opportunity to see her afterwards socially. And I told her, I'm like, thank you so much for sharing that one freaking assignment around, she calls it an appreciation game. And you basically just start your day. It's kind of like morning pages, you know, three to five, but this is specifically focused on appreciation, not just gratitude, but like appreciation. Appreciation feels like an active, you know? And so yeah. I've been doing that ever since her workshop, which made me not start my day on my freaking phone, looking at, you know, my notifications and my this and my that, which my like ambitious or like OCD mind is like, I need to go clear those. I need to go read those. And it's like, I didn't start my mornings feeling very good. It made me feel hollow and like, I'm just never going to get there. And it's just, you know, I just, I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to live my life like that. <laughs> I, I hear you. And, um, and I love the appreciation game idea. I, I do something similar, which is, you know, I write down three things I'm grateful for mm -hmm. in the morning and then I review it at night. And then I go to bed with that in my mind. And, but I like the idea of writing several pages. That's really powerful. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny going back to this idea of sharing, sharing with our clients that, you know, things aren't always perfect. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I sent out an email the other day and the subject line was, she thought I was a Stepford wife. <laughs> and it's because <laughs> I, I, I did a half day workshop in New York City a year or so ago or two years ago, maybe now. And one of my old mastermind clients showed up and I was like, oh, hi, I haven't seen you in a while. And she's like, you know, Christine, I just have to tell you. She's like, I, I've noticed how the past few years you're really being very open about more stuff. And I want to thank you for that. And I'm like, oh, t tell me more. You know, I'm curious. And she's like, well, back, you know, back when we, we were in the mastermind together, you know, a bunch of us were all like, is Christine like ever have anything go wrong? Like, is she like a Stepford wife? Like she literally said that. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my God, I'm so glad for the validation affirmation that like yes. it's good for me to open up about things you yes know? Um, yes and, that's usually what people most want to see I mean they don't want to yeah. see like a shit show every day you know we need to show no. we do have a, but it's like the <laughs> realness of it like you know what I really had a crappy day or like this thing happened and you know what I'm here's how I handled it and I I think that we can all just give ourselves permission to be real you know to stand in our power stand in our brilliance around the stuff that like we bring the heat on but I'll say, yeah. I'm not perfect. I'm working on this particular area, this particular thing. And, you know, once I get some more clarity on it, I'll, I'll tell you what I learned. I love that. I, I love that your subject yeah. line is that. It's probably like yeah. a very well open email, like high open rate, high open rate, right? Girl, well, how can people find you? How can people find you online? Where do you want to take them? Anything you want to yeah, give? So mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So I, my website is she's got clients.com. That's like the hub for everything. Got lots of articles on there, but there's also a, um, a freebie that they can get at that website, which is, um, all about getting to 10 K in your business. Um, yes. which I know Jenny, you talk about, especially with new coaches and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's an ebook and, um, it'll explain to you exactly how to, especially use online marketing to mm -hmm. grow your community and to actually monetize your community. So they can grab that at she's not clients. Awesome. 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 And I also want to thank you because you're one of our amazing affiliate partners for get yeah, Gutsy coach training school. And I'm sure some of your community are tuning in right now. Um, why do you like sending people to, to this school that I have created? I know a lot of your community has, has stepped forward and joined us. Yes. Like, Mm -hmm. It's a very good synergy going on there. Mm -hmm. um, I I feel good about sending them there because first of all, I know you, Jenny, and I know your heart and you're an amazing woman and you're the real deal. <laughs> so that's like a big part of why I'm happy to promote you. Um, Cause I don't just do that, you know? Um, but I, I think that it's also an important service that you're performing because um, I know you talk about this a lot, which is coaching school, traditional coaching school only gives you part of the picture. Mm -hmm. um, they might teach you how to be a great coach, but then there's the whole marketing and business side. And I know that's part of your brilliance. So that's another reason why I love to recommend it because I know you get that piece. And as a marketing coach, mm -hmm. I'm like, that's what we need, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that's, that's a huge difference. That's really important for people to realize that that's, that's a part of sort of like your vision. For people. Yes. Thank you. And thank you for all your support. And I'm excited to see the remaining souls who join us for our next class. So everybody make sure you go join. And, you know, if uh, Christine is, is um, spreading the word. So, you know, you can w go through Christine and, you know, just, we just want to welcome you in because 
we believe so much in what we're doing. And I know that the world does need more coaches and you need guidance around this because, you know, this, we're, at a, we're at like a crucial turning point in our planet's history. And this is the time, especially for women to step up as leaders. Like to me, coaching is just such a wonderful career to be able to bring all these talents that we have and our expertise and our brilliance and the fact that we want to live where we want to live and we want to work from home and we want to go to yoga or Starbucks whenever we feel like it. And or Hawaii. <laughs> or Hawaii. I know you love Hawaii and I like see that for you. And, yeah. you know, it's just like, to me, this is such a, such a gem of a spot. And for those of us who consider ourselves teachers, like your friend, I consider myself a teacher. I'm a spiritual teacher, and I do that through my business, and it allows me the ultimate freedom and flexibility, which is very helpful because I am a mom of three, and I like to – I'm a rolling stone too. I like to go places. I like to lead retreats in, like, really awesome spots, and you do that too. Like, you do that brilliantly, and I'm so pumped to see what's, you know, what's coming, what's coming in 2018 for you, Christine. We need more women leaders. We need yes. more women leaders. Yes. We just, it's we a watershed do. moment right now and mm. it's time for more of us to step up. Totally. I think we're like coaches are like the women leaders who realize like we don't do the corporate thing, but we got to get out here and we want to get paid and yeah. we want to get out and we want to say what we think. <laughs> we want to do yeah. it on terms like, oh, it's a thing. It's called coaching. Okay. So yeah. like come and join us. It's fucking awesome. It's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> Girl, I want to know what's the gutsiest move you've ever made? How does it inspire your life and work today? Ooh, okay, so I've been thinking about this because I knew you were going to ask. And mm -hmm. um, I think what I have to say is it's more of a theme of mm -hmm. under which there's many examples. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And I think, it, I think it's the act of not settling, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, uh, in the past, if you had said that that was like a noble thing, I'd be like, no, it's a failure. Like I'm leaving school and I'm dropping out of law school. And, but what I was really doing was not, it was not settling for something that didn't feel right or feel good. And the same thing happened in my marriage. You know, it was like this big deal to decide to walk away because it's like, oh, everything looks so great from the outside, but I was very unhappy. And so mm -hmm. it's that willingness to step away, you mm -hmm. know, and to be like, I'm not going to go back and get another job. I'm going to mm -hmm. try to do this for myself and see mm -hmm. what happens. Mm -hmm. And that's not settling. And I think that that is gutsy and more people would enjoy their lives and the path of their lives if they if they understood that mm. um that they don't have to settle yeah. that there's a lot more out there mm. my gosh you just said that so well <laughs> i was like i kept the thing and i circled it and oh my goodness that is so good and girl i think that's also like a piece of the next evolution of your work i mean that's that i mean i know your book is like there's more to life than this and so there is that yeah, yeah. i'm not settling but there's there's so much in that, especially for women. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Christine. Thank you. You're a dear friend. I've loved having you here. I know our listeners got so much out of this conversation. Y'all go find her. She's got clients.com. Christine is the real deal. She knows her shit. And she is, you know, really just, she puts herself out there. And what I also appreciate about you is you really share your point of view. You share your opinion yep. on things, and I know that takes a lot of courage because not everyone is going to share your opinion. But you're willing to do it because it matters to you. And I think when we look back on our lives, we want to know that we that we personally feel we're going to be on quote, the right side of history. That we're going to feel like I said yeah. what I wanted to say. Certain people didn't like it, but I spoke my truth. And if you're not speaking your truth, guess what? You're settling. You're settling for mediocrity. You're settling for people like, I just want to be liked and I want everyone to like think I'm super nice. And you know yeah. what? Through that, that's not going to work in this line of work, especially. <laughs> but the, and Jenny, that's also what leaders do, right? They go first. They say yes. things that are not necessarily, you know, the mm -hmm. most, you know, vanilla things. They say things that spark controversy sometimes and that's okay. That is um, absolutely okay. The way. That's right. Yeah. Leaders go first. So, okay, everybody, you got to do it because you're a leader too. It's time to go first. This is Jenny Fennig sending you so much love, light, and faith as you get gutsy. I will see you next time. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and you're listening to Get Gutsy with Jenny Fennig. Gutsy leaders unite and ignite.